Uh, thanks so much indeed for joining us here on DXB today for another deep dive into all things serial entrepreneurism, looking at businesses uh, across the city, how they've come to be and how they are helping shape our lives. Shafat Hashmi is the uh, chairman of Stallion Gates Investment and he's also the, the brains behind Brandby Global uh, joining us now. Shafat, thank you so much indeed for your time. It's an honor. Great to have you with us here on the sofa, especially when we're addressing, you know, this sort of unique ecosystem that we all call home. I mean, a question we've asked to, to all of our guests tonight, do you think there's something different here? Do you think there's something in the water when it comes to entrepreneurism and entrepreneurial spirit? I think it's the, it's the unique location of Dubai and the way Dubai has positioned itself, not only within the GCC region, but addressing markets like Africa, the Indian subcontinent, Pakistan, obviously Russia and Europe is pretty much central. But I think it's also the vision of His Excellencies and those who've been here, who've been the founding you know, fathers of the country, to really position it to serve as a hub for the GCC, the Arab world, the Middle East Africa region, and really creating it as a magnet as to whatever can be achieved over here as a mm. trading hub. So if you ask me, I really consider Dubai more like a global cafe, right. where mm. everybody comes, sits down, chats, and just do a transaction or a deal. It's not necessarily about Dubai, but it's the platform, the opportunity and the infrastructure that the city provides to execute deals. Yeah, nice way to look at it. I have a question for you, um, because I know you invest in multiple businesses. Mm. Um, how much do you weigh, and in also different stages of growth, how much do you weigh uh, the importance of a founder when you're investing in a business versus the actual business model? If I would assign a percentage, how much of it is the person versus the model or what they're investing in? I think we're very fluid in that matter. Sometimes, you see, we can pivot businesses. When we look at a business idea, it can be changed. We could look into new markets, we could look into a better business modeling, we could look into a better strategy to scale, a better brand, better features. But a person, I cannot change. So you're betting on, on the person? So we always invest in people, okay. their intelligence, their exposure, their experience, their skill set, and most importantly, their character and integrity. And I think the future is and, and the past is all about strategic partnerships, collaborations with great people that build great things. So Shafat, it's a very interesting topic of the show. So we've had many entrepreneurs on the show, but this is, I think, our first episode on serial entrepreneurs, you know, and the fact that you guys have both managed several businesses, yeah. not just one. So is it, is it a leap, because it seems a leap in my mind, managing just one business to managing multiple businesses either within the same group or across sectors, across industries. Um, what is that growth journey like? I think a lot of people think that business is about, you know, finding a problem mm -hmm. and finding a solution which is efficient, mm -hmm. i.e. save time, save money, everybody talks about it in a, in a, with a value proposition. Mm -hmm. But the real entrepreneurial spirit is, so you can call that person an inventor or a founder, right, or a solution provider, but not an entrepreneur. The definition of an entrepreneur is to guess the marketing formula right. A person is a genius in creating a brand out of it, communicating it properly to the customer that it resonates with that segment, and obviously has a way to monetize it and scale it. That's entrepreneurship. So once you learn that branding, marketing formula, and most importantly sales, which is the top number on your PL statement, I usually say this to people, you get the top number right, don't mm -hmm. worry about what's below that. Right. You know, and then it's the bottom line. I mean, whatever is down the bottom can be managed in so many ways, but you just get the top number right. You get the marketing formula right, you become a serial entrepreneur because now you know how it works, the way it works, what's the process. Mm. And you I make that sound easy. That's so stressful. And can I just, <laughs> can I talk about that? He's like, yeah, it's okay. Just, just all your money, everything you know. But hold on, let's talk numbers here. Because the way that we've been talking, it sounds like you've got a few businesses. We're reaching almost 100 here that you've got your, that you're involved in, right? I mean, how many businesses do you own? And how many are you a board member of? How many have you invested in total? Just give us a number here, first of all, before I ask my question. I said as a board member on 28 startups with 42 portfolio companies, 68% uh, of our investments are in real estate. Majority of that is in, you know, um, agri-tech, uh, ad tech, fintech. Uh, you know, I love, firstly, you know, um, health tech. Uh, so there, there are different sectors where we invest, and that is the beauty of a diversified portfolio because it diversifies risk. And that's the core of doing great investments and running great portfolio businesses. And most of the time, you just need to have deep market insights on the grassroots level, being very close to your customer to understand what they 
want and what is the demand in the market. I think the most important part is your timing to get your timing right to enter and exit. So how many, how many, how do you keep all those tabs open in your brain? How do you even have meetings with each one of those companies? Like how does that Because I'm all better than Google Chrome. <laughs> <laughs> Hashem, I interrupted you earlier, go for it. No, 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 <laughs> I was just uh, saying to your point earlier about serial entrepreneurship, there's also some entrepreneurs in, in my estimate that are great at building mm. at the early stage and they yeah. love that. There's always a thirst to build. And some are able to make it to kind of the you know later stage CEO when you have a big company and some don't. Some, from my experience, just love building and when the first period is done, they want to move on to the next business. Mm. And I think that's perfectly okay. And I think the second thing that's very important is for our culture here is to start celebrating this idea of serial entrepreneurship. Mm. Because I think there is still a taboo for failure. You know, um, we don't have that many entrepreneurs when they fail, I think it's a bit of a taboo. I think the more we move away from this and move into kind of celebrating failures as well, as part of that serial entrepreneurship, the more entrepreneurs I think will, will come to the market. Do you agree? I think there are two ideas to it. Uh, one is, I come across a lot of people who are doing a lot of many things or trying to do a lot of many things without focus. I personally think that laser focus is extremely important. You pick up one project that's his ideation stage, build it up, start selling it, get the revenue modeling right, make it profitable. Once the business is profitable, it is investable. It's a very simple formula. So you got that investable, you got that profitable, now it's okay to move on to another one. But delegation, structure, and processes, that should be at the heart before you move on to the next business because you have to make that business sustainable with a very straightforward, clear vision for the next 10 years, five years, broken it down into how the growth looks like, how the scale looks like. And I think it's very important once again, business is people to people. Mm -hmm. Whoever consumes is people, whoever runs is people. They're not you know, <coughs> one office or one computer communicating with another computer. So when we talk about people, emotions have to be involved um, controls have to be involved um, and a lot many things have to be involved mm. and therefore it's very important that you have the right CEO the right CEO the right CMO the right chiefs out there because I think the leadership is what builds a great team and the culture of people I cannot stress more upon it but it's really the people that build your business not you alone absolutely so one last piece of advice before we let you go for those um, attempting, striving to go from being an entrepreneur to a serial entrepreneur. That one last piece of advice. I think be real and be practical. Uh, real life is not Shark Tanks or Dragon's Den. You know, uh, that's a reality show. Real life is not about playing a valuation game with a PowerPoint presentation and expecting a million dollars valuation for nothing, right? Every person has an idea. The real deal is who's able to execute that idea and it's not only about the first mover advantage, it's about the fast mover advantage. How fast you hit profitability. So the VC space and the investing space has literally changed now. My advice is, it's not important. There is, it's not important that you wanna carry that tag of being a founder and entrepreneur. It's okay to be a manager in a company, but whatever you do, do it with excellence and pursue excellence. Can I add something here, Dina? Also, it's important. I mean, I think you're starting for the first time in the region mm. to see the potential of exits. When you start a business, one of the important things you have to think about as an entrepreneur, how do I exit? And you're starting finally to see capital markets now develop here. You see it in Abu Dhabi, you see it in Dubai, where people can exit their businesses, not just by being acquired by another company, but also by going public. And I think that's a game changer. Mm. When I was in banking, we used to talk about this for the longest time, Companies here would start small, but there was no exit via public market. If that channel develops, I think that becomes a game changer. Mm. Absolutely, I think IPO is a great way to exit. M&As are huge, now also in the United States region. And there's a lot of uh, mid-market segment banks where people have $50,000 to a quarter million dollars saved. They can't really buy property or an asset or a big asset class to have perpetual income or you know passive income coming through. I yeah. think M&As and business deals is something which really is the future. And I think the more transactions that take place in this deal making will really spur the investment activity Absolutely. in this region. Thank you so, so much for all your wisdom and for being with us today. Honestly, it has been amazing having you. Please stay with us right there while I just shift the spotlight over momentarily to diet.
Diet, you got our DXB in 60. Yes. Ready to go? Hashim, I'm sure they did not tell you about this. No. But we are quizzing you. <laughs> <laughs> so we found out about your brilliance and your mind and how you build the businesses. But let us find us a little bit about more about you. So I have got 60 uh, seconds to answer, for you to answer as many questions as possible. Are you oh ready? Oh dear, okay. Okay. I'm ready. Okay, let's cue the clock in three, two, one. If you weren't an entrepreneur, what kind of career would you have? I would go back to banking. <laughs> oh, one thing you cannot live without. My podcast. Very good. Your motto in life and work? Work hard. Your hidden gem in Dubai? Going to Barsha Park. Hey. Oh, wow. Uh, your inspiration? My family. Beautiful. A book you're reading at the moment? I'm rereading John Didion's The Year of Magical Thinking. Oh, amazing. Top series you've watched this summer? I think everybody's watched Succession. Okay. <laughs> Top podcast recommendation. I think I know the answer. I'm not going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. You should have. <laughs> Fine. The night house conversation. Okay. Great. <laughs> if you could hang with someone for 24 hours, who would it be? Oh, my youngest daughter, Lulu, for sure. She's oh, very cool. Gorgeous. The most interesting person you've met in the city? That's hard to say, all three of you, today. <laughs> and why Dubai? I think we talked about it. There's something in the water, like Tom said. Yeah, definitely. Time is up and you answered all the questions. Well thank done. Thank you. Nailed thank it. You. Great to have thank you with us. Thanks thank so much indeed for being much. our guest co-host. In fact, thank you, you both for giving thank up your time. It's busy time. So thanks so much indeed thanks for being for with us here. Uh, listen, let's find out who is going to be performing for us a little later on. There's still plenty more to come on DXP today. Hi, this is Eric from Wi-Fi. We're from the Philippines.